Cedarville College is pleased to present Answers with Ken Ham, a 12-part video series defending the Bible from the very first verse. Today's question, is Genesis relevant today? And now, Ken Ham. I want you to think about countries like America, England, Australia. They once had Christian morality so prevalent in the culture. But now when I went to England, I was absolutely shocked. There was hardly any vestige of biblical Christianity left in public life. And yet, before the last war, they say probably half the population attended church. Or take America. I mean, years ago, you could say America is a Christian country, but there's something dreadfully wrong today when we see increasing abortion and homosexual behavior and lawlessness and euthanasia and suicide. Something dreadfully wrong with America. What, what has happened to, to our nations in the West? One of the verses of Scripture that, to me, sums up what's going on is Psalm 11.3. In Psalm 11.3, we read this, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And, of course, the psalmist is explaining the foundations, ultimately, of, of God's Word can't be destroyed. But I want to apply it this way. Let, let me sort of give you an analogy. Let's take a typical American house, okay? Oh, actually, sorry, that's not a typical American house. I've lived here long enough to know this is a typical American house. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone owns a car and a pickup truck and, well, anyway. But let's take a typical California house after the big one. Uh, one of the things we're worried about in, in California, we lived there for a number of years, and so whenever we felt the ground shake, we thought, uh-oh, if the foundations go, down will come the structure. But you see, that, that collapsing structure that you see there, that collapsing structure to me represents the, the Christian fabric of, say, America. We see it collapsing around us. Or, or, or the Christian morality was once prevalent in, in countries like England. We see it collapsing uh, around us. Why? Well, a structure collapses because the foundation is removed. When the foundation is removed, down comes the structure. And I want you to think like this. You see, when we take the Bible, the book of Genesis is like a foundation, and the rest of the Bible is like a structure. And if you take out the foundational book of Genesis away from the Bible, then the whole structure comes down. And once the, that structure comes down, then the whole foundation of Christianity is gone. Let me explain to you in more detail. In Matthew 19, when Jesus was asked about divorce or concerned marriage, do you know what he said? Haven't ye read, he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and twain will be one flesh. By the way, where did Jesus quote from? Genesis, didn't he? Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, talking about the same one man and same one woman. Do you know what he was saying? He was saying this, if you want to understand marriage, then the doctrine of marriage is dependent upon the events of Genesis. You become one because God took dust, made a man, took his side and made a woman. You become one because you're one flesh. We know us to be a man and a woman and not a man and a man. Why? Because God made a man and a woman, not a man and a man. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Don't you think? And by the way, I'll guarantee that those churches that condone homosexual behavior or ordain homosexual pastors do not believe in a literal genesis because as soon as you believe in a literal genesis, what is it? One man for one woman for life. That's what marriage is all about. The whole meaning of marriage is tied up with its origin, but not just marriage. Do you realize that ultimately every single biblical doctrine of theology, directly or indirectly, is founded in Genesis 1 to 11? Think about it very carefully for a moment. Marriage, Genesis 1 to 11. Why do we wear clothes? Genesis.